I want to make an interesting observation here on uh, the collar of God's throne. Uh, very uh, telling. Um, we're entering into the Christmas season here in America, uh, called by different names in other countries. Um, and uh, certainly Romans chapter 14 talks about, you know, people, you know, thinking highly of one day above another and holidays and things like that. I have a study on answering Christmas criticisms. Uh, a lot of Christians are against uh, Christmas and for any reason at all and things, and, and I'm certainly against parts of it, but um, there's something I want to say. Because I see a lot of Christians and they'll come down on the thing of the collars of red and green and they'll say, see, it's the collars of pagan deities and things like this. Uh, be real careful. Uh, don't let your ignorance of Scripture cloud your thinking and make you say some really stupid things. Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. John speaking here after he gets caught up to heaven. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardin stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Okay? If you do the study, jasper and sardin are red stones. An emerald, well, that's kind of an easy one to figure out. It's green. Red and green. And I'll tell you what, I've talked with many Christians over the years on this issue of Christmas and things and whatever. And uh, I remember the one brother and he said, you, you know, he's bad family situation and things. And he's like, you know, there's really not a whole lot that I can look forward to at, at the Christmas season. But he said, there's just something, just something about that time. And he said, I don't know what it is. And uh, he said, there's just something there. And you know what? Uh, this time of the year, it's just like I start seeing that those red and green lights and it's just like there's something there just something there brethren that's what we're going to see when we get to see the lord get caught up at the rapture we're going to get up there and you know it talks about a sea of of you know uh, verse six and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind we're going to get up there and it's going to be like this crystal clear you know essentially like ice there, a sea of glass like under crystal. And there's going to be this throne, and it's red and green. Pretty amazing. And that, you know, for me, maybe you're not this way, but for me, I see the lights, I see them on the snow and things like that. I see a beautiful thing, and it just brings me joy. And it's not joy because I'm going to be getting lots of things and it's covetousness or something, or because I might see Santa Claus or something. No, 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 no. It's something deeper than that. There's something there, right? Right there. You say, well, I believe that the throne's going to be white. You know, I've seen that, you know, some of these anti-Christmas people. Well, the, the, the red and green is the collar of the god and goddess, you know, pagan and witchcraft. and so, uh, You know, God's throne is white. Well, if you do the study on that, you go over to Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. And you go down through there, it's the judgment of the lost dead. Judgment of the lost dead. So, Christians, when they get to see the throne for the first time, God sits on a red and green throne, on a sea of glass, like crystal, like a frozen sea. Red and green. The lost, when they get to see God, when they stand before His throne, God's sitting on a white throne at that point in time. Hmm. Just a little reminder there. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say by that, but you know, it's just, you know, the, you'll get into some of the studies and things, and, and you'll get these people, and they're just so dogmatic, and they just, you know, they'll fight you over this Christmas thing and stuff, and you don't dare have any joy at this time of the year. I mean, I've known anti-Christmas professing Christians and they'll, they literally will not allow their children to look at Christmas lights as they're driving down the road. Turn your head, children, it's Christmas lights. I mean, come on. And I find it interesting that they would be so radical against it when the Bible says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. It's up to you. Okay, it's one of the issues, one of the three issues that we can agree to disagree on. Diet, head covering, holidays, worshiping of holidays. 
or not, excuse me, not worshiping of holidays, celebrating holidays. Excuse me, I didn't mean to say worship. Don't use my words against me. A little slow of speech sometimes. Head coverings, diet, holidays. And I find it so interesting that there are people that are just so dead set against these evil colors of red and green at this time of the year and how dare people and stuff like this. And yet, rapture happens, you get caught up to heaven and you're going to see God's throne and it's those exact collars. Hmm. Remember who's in control, brethren. Okay? God is. So I just wanted to share that. Just thought that was kind of a little interesting insight. So um, keep uh, the Lord centered in this time period. Uh, remember why he came to the earth. I know it wasn't December 25th. Okay, I know that. But I'm saying, remember, use this time to remember uh, what the Lord did, the great gift that he gave, you know, the Father giving a gift to his children, you know. And uh, remember that. And it's a wonderful time of the year to track. Absolutely wonderful. You'll see even, you know, a lot of lost people and things, and they'll just have a, there's just more happiness and more joy out there. Use it for, for the Lord's advantage, brethren. Get out there and do some tracting. Okay? Instead of being a little, you know, Scrooge, Bah Humbug, and all this other stuff, you know, where you're out there and you're just miserable. I hate this time of year. And, you know, whatever, walking around. Instead of doing that, why don't you be happy? And say, well, this might be a false celebration. There are a lot of things about Christmas that, that aren't lining up with Scripture. But I'll tell you what, I sure like the red and green collars. I sure love to see that. I sure like to see those red and green lights reflecting on the snow or on a frozen lake or something. Reminds me of heaven, what I'm going to get to see someday. And I'm going to sure use this time to get out there and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, do some gospel tracting. Just my suggestion. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.